is fasting good for you? That's what I'm hearing a lot. It's a hot topic right now. It is. And it, there's lots of kinds of fasting. There's not just fasting one size fits all. Right. Absolutely. And I know you have a difference of opinion, so mm -hmm. it'll be good to hear both of our versions. Yep. And a lot of this is just the way it's affected me. Mm -hmm. So again, everybody's individual. Mm -hmm. And also, even the individuality, if certain conditions exist, maybe if it's cancer or diabetes or whatever it is, maybe certain people are going to be better with fasting than people that don't really have a need for it. Absolutely. And that's, you know, uh, I think the core of everything we've really talked about, Jen, is like, mm -hmm. what is good for the individual and what is best for the individual. So in general, fasting can offer so many benefits for people. Mm -hmm. And and when we say fasting, there are some different types of fasting. So maybe we should talk through that a little yes. bit so everyone understands. So right now, I think the hot one is intermittent fasting. Right? Or time-restricted feeding is really what it is. So it is. Like the 16-8 or the... Or the uh, I think some people will do even to like one meal a day. Mm -hmm. So they'll have, they'll eat in like a four hour window. So yep. it'll be like one big meal or maybe even two smaller meals, but within a four hour window. And then you have prolonged fasting, which is anything 24 hours and beyond. Right. Exactly. So, you know, some people with the intermittent fasting, you know, time restricted eating, they might not eat for 16 hours, eat inside of eight hours, right? Mm -hmm. Or again, push it to not eat for 20 hours, eat for only four hours. Um, you know, that can have some health benefits. And one of the things with intermittent fasting um, that I think is kind of at the core of it is the body can either be digesting food or detoxifying, right, and, and healing. It can't do both at the same time. Mm -hmm. So when we give the body a little bit more time and space to do things, whether it be in the time-restricted intermittent fasting type, mm -hmm. or we can talk more about it in the prolonged fasting because that's where the benefits really start to come in. But, um, but that is allowing the body to rest a little bit from a digestive perspective. Yeah, and I know... For me, I have been highly interested in autophagy, mm -hmm. and so going over 24 hours. So on Sunday, I end my Sunday's usually a day I let loose and enjoy a little bit more. And Monday, I don't eat, and then Tuesday, I'll eat again. Sometimes I will go um, 72 hours. I really haven't gone beyond 72 hours, but the magic thing is autophagy kicks in after 24 hours, mm -hmm. and then that's the process where your cells, your your damaged cells, are strengthening or you're flushing them out probably not describing it perfectly and then strengthening your cells in, in between so it can fight off cancer for me it's helped with the inflammation get rid of my ulcerative colitis and it's been very easy for me to follow and it's also broken my connection to food because it's almost like sometimes we treat food as we don't really need it we're eating because it's meal time mm -hmm. or we're just so connected to food that we're it's always a part of our daily life and it's been able for to me to like appreciate food more and make better food choices when I'm actually implementing fasting. Right. But the I I strongly believe that everybody can benefit from any kind of fasting, whether even if it's a 16-8 window, mm -hmm. where you're not eating too late at night, you're not snacking all throughout the day, you're not waking up in the middle of the night, getting an Oreo cookie, whatever it is. You're, when you have some guidelines, it's easier to follow. Okay, I'm just going to follow these guidelines. Right. And, and I would agree with most of what you just said. Mm -hmm. um, so one of the things that I find, you know, from um, the professional side of it and like my background is intermittent fasting is not good for everyone. So I want to make sure we kind of debunk that myth right now. Mm -hmm. Anyone who has thyroid or adrenal disorders, mm -hmm. there's actually research out there where intermittent fasting is contraindicated. Mm -hmm. So if anyone watching does suffer from hypothyroidism, hyperthyroidism, um, any adrenal disease, adrenal fatigue, intermittent fasting can actually do more harm than good. Mm -hmm. okay? okay. So those are things I think um, sometimes people read on blogs, intermittent fasting is going to help me lose weight. It's going to be great and have all these benefits. And it actually sets them backwards. Okay, so that's one thing I just want to get out there in the clear. Um, secondly, too, with intermittent fasting, 
the only way to make it good is to make sure what are you doing in the eight hours, four hours, whatever time that you're eating mm -hmm. and make sure that is the most nutrient dense, the mm -hmm. most power packed, the most, you know, energetically um, healthy mm -hmm. foods and choices. Because if you're going to intermittent fast and in your eight hour, four hour eating window, you're going to eat Jack in the box or, you know, go to Subway yeah. or, you know, eat crappy foods, mm -hmm. right? that is not going to serve you. And then you're actually gonna start messing up your physiology and your biochemistry more because now your body is actually starving because you don't have nutrients that your body needs um, because you didn't do well with your, your eight hour eating window. Yeah, I was, I was reading a study that had a typical American diet. So they broke up two groups, same diet, and they just, some, the first group ate all day long and the second group, I think it was an eight hour window and over six weeks. And I don't remember the exact results, but the intermittent fasting window had lost weight where the other group did not lose any weight. Mm -hmm. So it even, I, I think we can all agree, like we should never just eat a bunch of crap. <laughs> like that should be like a universal rule, mm -hmm. but even if you were to constrict that time frame, usually you're still going to consume less calories it, naturally. Yeah. But being hyper aware of, okay, intermittent fasting isn't just the one solution. It's just something you can incorporate on top of a healthy diet. Absolutely. And that, you know... It like you said, the foundation is the quality, the healthy mm -hmm. food. Like if you're eating crap, be it in four hours, eight hours, all day long, it's still crap. <laughs> it's still crap. You're going to still feel like crap, right? So if you can build in the healthy foundation essentials, mm -hmm. keep it at a high quality diet, intermittent fasting for some people, mm -hmm. again, can be very beneficial. Um, but, you know, again, if there's hormone trouble, things with adrenals, thyroid, even things like PCOS and some um, more female hormone production systems, intermittent mm -hmm. fasting can be contraindicated. I have definitely heard that with like women that are trying to get pregnant. Yes. Probably not a, a good idea to do fasting. Right. And, and you know, that's where I get, I always get really weary of like blanket statements, right? Because oh, yeah. things are not good for everyone. And that's, you know, people out there will hear intermittent fasting, they'll read a blog on it and they'll think that's great for me. And they want to jump on that bandwagon, but they could be doing more harm than good. So anyone out there who is looking to make big shifts in dietary changes, you know, consulting with a professional, making sure that it is the right choice for them is yeah. so important. Oh, I, I totally agree with that. And for the people that don't have like some of the issues you have and that it could work for, um, one of the most inspiring stories I heard, uh, Jason Fung, he's a doctor out in Canada that treats diabetes, di um, patients with diabetes. And he describes insulin as you can't keep packing an insulin. It's like packing a suitcase and you keep packing it and packing it and your liver can't take any more insulin and it starts to reject it. And that's you. That's how my grandma died. Both of my grandmas actually because they didn't take care of themselves. So I, um, he, he had a patient that was two weeks away from having his foot amputated from his diabetes. He, instead of insulin, Jason had um, put him on a very strict diet. I think the first fast was two weeks of water only. And then he cycled in carnivore and, the, and keto maybe, and then more fasting. And in two months, he had no he had no symptoms of diabetes whatsoever. So, and uh, Dom Diagnusto is another guy I follow, and he is uh, the, he's done his PhD. He's done deep dives on this. I think he's probably one of the leading experts in fasting, where he believes fasting can help cancer patients mm -hmm. either go into remission. Or, and also make chemotherapy more doable where like they'll do chemotherapy and the next day be up at work or running, running five miles instead of like throwing up all day. Right. And for me, I, it's been, first of all, easy for me to follow. It helps me cure the inflammation from my colitis mm -hmm. and it's, um, it give me more energy and broken my connect, like almost like addiction to food because mm -hmm. I, love food so much I would think about it all the time now I don't even sometimes I can just get that off my plate I'm not even going to think about food right and when I do get food I appreciate it so much more so I make better choices yeah absolutely and with that it's so incredible how in the longer term fasting right can mm -hmm. really have those benefits um when when the body does have that time and space to not be busy with digesting food all the time, mm -hmm. it can go in, your immune system can go in and actually clean up all of your damaged cells. So yeah. in the case of the guy doing the water fast with the diabetes and mm -hmm. having the foot need to be amputated, I'm sure during that fasting time, his immune system was able to go, hey, we have all of these damaged cells down here.
here. Like, let's clean them up. Yeah. Gave the liver a huge, you know, um, lift, right? Mm -hmm. Because it's not worried about digesting all this food and everything. So there are some really great benefits to doing fast from 24 to 72 hours um, and beyond. Now, if anyone out there watching wants to do water fasting, anything like that, doing anything beyond 72 hours, you have to be supervised by a medical professional. Definitely, because that's when there are things that start to happen with the kidneys, the adrenals, the liver, different organs start to get involved and you want to be supervised doing that. And I know autophagy really the the biggest benefits are between that 24 hour and 72 hours. Yes. And they start to get a lot less yes. after 72 hours. So that's why I really haven't felt too compelled to go past 72 hours. Yeah. Uh, but and and really doing that on you know a monthly quarterly basis can mm -hmm. offer so many health benefits. Um, even though in my practice I primarily focus on helping people alleviate anxiety and depression and chronic stress, I also um, am a cleansing and detoxification specialist. So with um, with the autophagy, you know, that 24 to 72 hour window is so beautiful for the healing benefits you have in the body. But beyond that, again, without working in a, in a medical setting with a medical professional, um, you could do more harm than good. Mm -hmm. So as a general rule, sticking in that 24 to 72 hour range is very healthy. Mm -hmm. And even what you do before you start the fast and how you come out of the fast oh, is important too. Yes. And I will <laughs> say that I have broken 72 hour fast the complete wrong way of just I'm so I love food so much and um pumpkin puree like an organic pumpkin puree was like I found the softest thing to put in my stomach after a 72 hour fast yeah. mm -hmm. that usually like any pureed vegetable soups um bone broth. the time of year yeah bone broth maybe even some light vegetable juices mm. you know something that's very nourishing healthy mm -hmm. clean yeah right um but also easy to digest yeah. very important because if you want to come out of a 72 hour fast and eat you know a whole bowl of pad thai or you know a big you don't want to do it thing, I will tell you it's, it's not good you're body will not like you right no. um and even doing some things to prep before the cleanse um and before your fast can be super helpful so again that's where you know if someone doesn't have time to go out and do a bunch of research on all of this you know working with professionals to make sure they can do it in a safe way especially for their first or second ones right mm -hmm. and then once you get the process down you know fasting can be something i actually recommend people incorporate at least quarterly uh, a 72 hour water fast because of all the benefits yeah, and autophagy is, literally means your body eating itself. Yeah. It's eating itself of all the bad stuff. It is. I Funny, because uh, two weeks ago, I started to feel sick. I don't get sick very often, and I was mad at myself for being sick. And I was like, should I fast? Should I eat, feed it? I fasted, and by the next day, I was feeling better already. Mm -hmm. So I've almost become, you know, I don't fast all the time because I still love food, but I love the feeling I get on Tuesday mornings when I wake up after a fast, I do my hit. Um, and, um, and then I, today I actually had some keto muffins before I lifted cause I did hit first and then lifted. And I, I knew I need a little energy for lifting, but I know the hit accelerates the autophagy process mm -hmm. as is like green tea. So there's things that you can do to accelerate autophagy yep. while you're fasting. And it, for me, it, for energy wise, it's, I love waking up after a, after a 36 hour fast. Yeah. Yeah, so. and and again the um, the benefits, the energy that you get from it, um, just the cleaning out of toxins and you know da dead damaged cells in the body. It really is something I recommend people. Um, you know, most people it is safe for, but incorporating it on you know some sort of quarterly basis is really helpful. And Dr. Merkola wrote a really good book. It's called Keto Fast, and it's really not to do with the keto diet, but. What he, his, uh, there's a, an equate, the math, I don't remember, my, for my body, for my weight, it was 350 calories a day. It was like a fasting mimicking diet. Mm. So he thinks that two days a week you should do a fasting mimicking diet. So 350 calories is enough to get maybe a little bit of vegetables, maybe some a small amount of lean protein, blueberries, or just something to give your body some, where you get some nutrients, but you're not having really a full meal. Yeah. And, and, you know, I think that goes into almost a little bit more of that intuitive eating, mindful eating, because mm -hmm. there are some days where we maybe didn't burn through all the calories we ate the day before, and we can go with like 350 calories that day, mm -hmm. you know? And I think that also offers some health benefits. Cause then again, we're not dealing with digesting food all day long. Mm-hmm. 
you're not constantly spiking your insulin, which is just not good for you. So if you're snacking all day, and that used to be me, just nonstop eating, you, my insulin spikes, spikes, spikes. And I know that's not good for you either. Right. It's not. Um, and that's where we get, you know, a lot of disease processes can come in too. Um, anytime you're messing with blood sugar, yeah. you know, moods can be really affected too. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. They say that even the littlest bit of inflammation affects your prefrontal cortex, which affects your emotions, even your decision-making process. Mm -hmm. So if you kind of ate bad that day or the day before and you come home, you're like, should I go to the gym or should I sit on the couch and watch my favorite show? You might most likely be picking the couch. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And and that's one of the things I talk about with clients in my practice is how much foods can influence your moods. Yes. Right? Because mm -hmm. of those connections exactly. So the more you can get people to choose healthy cho you know, make healthy choices with their diet, maybe incorporate some things like fasting or cleansing, that can really help to improve moods too and focus mm -hmm. and clarity and you oh, know yeah. and increase energy levels so people want to go work out instead of go home and sit on the couch and watch T V all night. Or like get in like you're mad at your kids because the house is messy and I mean every day we have stress in our life so if we can control that with some of the stuff we put in the bot on our body like it, we're going to be not just healthier but we're going to be happier and the people around us are going to be happier. <laughs> Yeah, and, and it does have that beautiful ripple effect, right? Yes. The more that we do good for ourselves, the more we start to feel better, mm -hmm. the more kindness we can bring into the world and more compassion and caring. Yes. And, and if that if you're a mom and that's your kids, right, mm -hmm. then they can go out and be good friends to their friends. And, you exactly. know, it, it rolls out throughout the community. And I, I do believe at the end of the day, the world needs more kindness and compassion. And it does start Absolutely. with all of us. And it feels good. There's actually a... A Tim Ferriss, I don't want to get too off topic, a Tim Ferriss um, exercise that when you're in bad mood, we all scientifically know that when we're feeling gratitude, we it's it's impossible to be mad or angry. So mm -hmm. if you see a random person near the grocery store at the stoplight and you just wish really good wishes upon that person, you automatically get into a happier mode. Yes. So Yeah, and maybe that's a topic for another uh, <laughs> yes. future thing because the power of gratitude is really fascinating and it has so many healing benefits. So. But it's definitely inspiring. I can say my husband, uh, since I started my journey, he's lost 50 pounds this year. Wow. So I don't know if he would have done that on his own. I don't think so, but we're doing it together and you know, mm -hmm. people around us, it's being able to just help them. It's, it's fun. It is. Yeah. And I mean, I love what I do and helping people is what it's all about. And some people out there don't have people to do it, you know, with. And if people though are truly ready, you know, that's when it's time. Like if you have the internal burning desire to start making healthy changes and really want to do more, be more, you know, live your life, go get your purpose in life, changing the diet can be a huge factor in it. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, we went through a lot of things of fasting, and I think okay. it all comes down, again, to finding the finding the, the practice that's going to be right for you. Yes. Mm -hmm. And just being very aware, self-aware of that mind-body connection. So if you fast and you feel like you're going to die or try to kill somebody, maybe don't fast. <laughs> yes. Might not be for you. Right? Yeah. <laughs> um, and again, I think we're all individual. We all have different needs. Fasting can have a lot of benefits for the right person, you know, depending on what your health goals are, where you're at in your life, what health conditions you might have might not be the best for you. Um, or maybe it's just not a daily thing. Maybe you, you know, build it in a little bit in, in mm -hmm. some places during the week, but ultimately figuring out what works best for you is what it's all about. Um, you know, be it keto or fasting or any of the things that we've been talking about. Yeah. And like, if you're going to start something, don't go all in. Don't, don't be like, I've never fasted a day in my life. Let's do a 72 hour fast. Yes. Maybe start <laughs> with time restricted feeding and go on from there. Yeah, absolutely. Good point. Um, easing into things, yes. it, you know, be it dietary changes, fasting, the more slow, sustainable you can do it, probably the better results you're going to get. Yeah. Awesome. Well, I hope you learned a little bit about fasting and if it's right for you, if you want to give it a try, um, you can also reach out to Susan and really determine the right plan for you. Yeah. Thanks, Jen. Thanks, Susan.